Okay. So now we have the analogous concept for height, for any chains, that's width. The width of a post set is the maximum size of an anti-chain. And we ask, how hard is it to find the width? We observe the dual statements. It's clear how to provide a certificate for the assertion the width is at least something. You just simply provide an anti-chain of that size. But how do you find, how do you provide a certificate for a statement of the form the width of P is in most W? Again, if I give you a thousand point post set and someone claims the width is at most 42, how do they say that? How do they verify that? They say, I can't find an anti-chain of size 43 and I don't think you can either. That, that kind of reasoning is not convincing. Too many things to check. Picking up the 43 element sets of a thousand element set is not something that you want to do, and actually computers don't want to do it either. Okay. All right, now, if we simply take the set of minimal elements, that turns out to be an anti-chain of size seven. Is it clear to you in this picture that the red elements are the minimal elements? And I, hopefully I haven't left any out. There's seven of them all together. It is always the case that the set of minimal elements forms an anti-chain. How could it be that one of them is less than another? Then it wouldn't be minimal. So this says that the width is at least seven. Now we take the next slide and check just, for instance, the maximal elements. And hopefully I've marked them correctly. There are eight of them. The maximal elements always form an anti-chain. So these two slides together show, or this one in particular, shows that the width is at least eight. I've, I've got a certificate for you. You're looking at it. The red points form an anti-chain of size eight, and that can be verified by an independent, unbiased referee. Okay, here's the certificate for the assertion that the width is at least nine. I don't have to explain to you how I got it, how long it took me to do this, how I did it, whether I did it myself, whether I used the computer, whether I purchased it out on the grounds out there. But I've highlighted nine points, and you take a couple of minutes and check it out each pair of this nine element set forms an incomparable pair. That's not supposed to be obvious. Boy, it seems like some of those guys that are way up should be over some of those guys that are way down, but I don't think they are. Are you convinced? So what is the width of this post set? I don't know, but it's at least nine. I could stare at it for another 20 minutes. I could, I could have printed this out, broken you up into teams, and said, go at it and see if anybody can form an anti-chain of size 10. But instead, I'd, I'd really like to, to do this in a somewhat more analytical way. So let's take a look at this observation. If you can partition a post set into T antichains, then the height is at most T. Look at that first statement. Why is that correct? If I can break up a post set, into T antichains, then the height is at most 
T. This is just the pigeonhole principle. If you had a chain of size T plus 1 or higher, then you break that chain up into, those are the pigeons, and you put them into the holes, the Andy chains. But no two points in a chain that are distinct can go into the same antichain because any two distinct points in an antichain are incomparable. So that's how you can provide a certificate for a statement. If you want to claim that the height is at most 23, one way to do it is to simply provide a partition of the post set into 23 antichains. That, the correctness of the partition can be verified by your independent referee. The referee says, yep, that's a partition in 23 antichains. And once you have done that, you have indeed validated the statement that the height is at most 23. Now you can make exactly the dual statement for width. If you partition the post set into a certain number of chains, then that bounds the width from above. Now this, this slide right here, this has got a lot of content on it. You gotta think carefully about this to make sure that you understand what this slide is saying. All right, let's put it into practice. Now, I have the partition done via a coloring, just like we used to do in graphs. I have colored the elements of this post set with the integers from 1 to 6. But look at all the elements that have color 1. Is it clear to you that all the elements that have cover one, color 1 form an antichain? Now you have to look at that for a moment, but do you see it? All the elements which have color one are form an antichain. Now look at all the elements which have color two. They form an, an antichain. Question over here. Antichain or chain? Antichain or chain? All the elements which have the same color form an antichain. All right, now look, look at color three. You gotta look at that carefully, because you know, there's some threes that look like this. But all the elements which have color three form an antichain. Same with four, same with five, same with six. So that coloring determines a partition of this post set into six antichains. And therefore, that coloring is a certificate for the correctness of the statement, the height of this post set is at most six. All right, putting the two things together, what is the height of this post set? It is six. I got a six element chain, Six five four three two one in blue, and I have a certificate that the height is at most six. The blue points say at least six. The partition says at most six, so the answer is six. You're going to look at that slide very carefully. 